Good morning, everyone. I'm Pastor Eun Hae Choi of Glenview United Methodist Church. I welcome all of you gathering here in person and online worship, young and old, new visitors and longtime members. All are welcome here. Welcome all of you. Today is Communion Sunday. Children uh, from age three to fifth grader, go to, please go to the social hall. There is Sunday school classes meeting. Sunday school teachers are waiting for you and you come back later to join in your family for communion. Children and confirmation class will stay here and children please follow Sunday school teachers. Today is the fifth Sunday of Epiphany season. And Jesus tells us, you are the light of the world. Rise and shine your, your light to the world. That means we always stand up now, rise, rise and shine your light. And we pass God's peace to each other. We can bow, we can wave God's peace to you. God's peace to you, everyone. What a beautiful sunny day and light just to shine upon us. And let us join in the opening prayer. Holy God, we come before you with awe, for you are great in love and power. Some of us come with reluctance and some with joy, some with sadness and others full of fear. Yet we know you receive us as we are. Speak to us through your word and send us back into the world, renewed and eager to do your will. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
may be seated, but please turn in your hymnal to page 833 for our sung responsive reading. Bo will play first, and then I'll sing the response, and then we'll all sing together. those who fear the Lord, who greatly delight in God's commandments. Wealth and riches are in their house, and their righteousness endures forever. It is well with those who deal generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice. Their hearts are firm, trusting in the Lord. When they see their adversaries, their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. They have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn is exalted in honor.
This morning's first scripture reading is from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the testimony of God to you with superior speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were made not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are being destroyed, but we speak God's wisdom a hidden mystery which God decreed before the ages for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age understood. For if they had, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God, For what human knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's Spirit, for they are foolishness to them, and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And now let us rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. From Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under the bushel basket. Rather, they put it on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, Not one letter, not one stroke of the letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Please be seated. And let us join in a prayer. O oh God, our hearts are filled with your spirit. Just your spirit. Make us spiritual. That way we may know you. We may have your mind. Thank you, God, that we understand both light and darkness and follow your light even through the valley of darkness. Open our hearts, touch our hearts, that we may open our hearts and abandon our own minds and receive and have your mind, O oh God. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. We know the famous saying by Socrates, know yourself. You know that, right? Know yourself. But it is really, really, really hard to know ourselves because we don't see what we do and we don't hear what we say. I see mirror myself maybe twice or well, maximum three, four times a day, but you see me always and you know how I look like, how I behave, but I don't know who I am. We just live our lives without knowing who we are. Also, I heard that it is our own family members whom we don't know or we don't understand the most. We have a profound assumption that we know our children and our spouses because we love them. We can say we love them as many times as we want, but we still may not know them or understand them. I don't know why we don't know or understand them. One day, year 2016, it was like seven years ago, I was listening to NPR when I was driving. It is a radio programming. There was an interview with Sue Klebold, the mother of Dylan Klebold, who did Columbine High School Massacre with his friend Eric. Later, he wrote a book, A Mother's Reckoning describing the guilt, despair, shame, and confusion that she struggled with every day since the incident. She said many things, she said about many things in the interview in her book, but the ultimate message of her book is, you may not know your own children, no matter how much you love them. As a parent, it was a terrifying message for me. I never forget it. I never forget it since I heard that interview seven years ago. It's always in my mind. I knew I loved my child, but I had to remember that it was very possible, very possible that I didn't know him. In today's reading from the letter to Corinthian Christians, I think, Paul has the same message for them and also for all of us. Paul says no, no to many things that the Corinthian Christians assumed that they knew all well. Paul says, no, I didn't come to you to proclaim the, the mystery of God in many wisdoms. Many good words, sounds good words, Swall, swallowing talks, and sound by wisdom words. Then he says, yes, I came to you to let you know only Jesus Christ and his crucifixion. That's it. Who in the world wants to know a hideous death on a cross and accept it as the good news and gospel. But that's Paul's only one message to all Christians, Jesus Christ and his crucifixion. That's Paul's good news of Jesus Christ. 
we are still in epiphany season when and where God reveals God's self to us and to the whole world. God already revealed God's self again and again in the messages of prophets, the words in the scriptures, and the teachings and miracles of Jesus Christ. They are all planned in our sight. And we just need to read them. So, can we say now, we know God and Jesus Christ? We know God. Recently, I heard that Chet GPT, am I right, Chet GPT? You told me about that, Chet GPT. This app. Yeah, Chet GPT. <laughs> this app, it's a computer app. It could write any research papers for college students, any business letter, and even poems. When Chris told me, I was like, you get away from me. I love poems, and if computer program app even can write poems, I was like, what the world there is? I said, I cannot handle that. You get away from me. Don't talk about that, that app. But a pastor tried this program, this app. He commanded it to write a five-minute sermon based on John Chapter 3, verses 1 through 16. We know John 3, 16. For God loved so much that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. I see some of you, many of you, lips moving, you memorized. You have that message in your heart. Thanks be to God. And this pastor commanded this computer app to write five-minute sermon. And then it took only five seconds for it to write a perfect sermon, perfect. The pastor commanded it the second time to write 20-minute sermon. And it did it only 10 seconds. 20-minute sermon in 10 seconds. I was so shocked and disgusted and frustrated. For me to write a sermon, just to write a sermon, it took, it take minimum of 10 to 12 hours to finish it. And my butt sore, I need to keep standing and refresh my mind. I, without that, I'm just stuck there. I need to sleep over it and think it again and again and write, and sit down and write, minimum 10 to 12 hours. Not good. And I was, the, I was angry, actually. I was angry. What I'm doing here? This computer, I can do it in 10 seconds. And what I'm doing here? I was angry. This computer program can say many wonderful things about writings, wonderful things about the Bible, Jesus and God. But I dare to tell you, computer doesn't know God. If I preach a computer-produced sermon today, you may not know. You may think, oh, just another sermon that she has to talk and I have to put up with. <laughs> just either take only 15 minutes I have to put, put up with. I can email you a computer-generated sermon. If you're not read it, you will be surprised how sounds good it is. Computer just to collect data, data available in the internet and compose a sermon about God, but it doesn't know God. It doesn't know the mind of God. And then it doesn't know the depth of God. It sounds very good, but I dare to tell you, it doesn't know the depth of God, the spirit of God. So at the Bible study gatherings and meetings, I encourage people not to read, not to read, not to be satisfied with the commentary sections in the study Bible. 
I always tell them that everything they want to know is on Google. Don't be bothered, just Google. And just right away, one second, they answer you. And don't be bothered. Don't be bothered to read these commentaries, what other people say. Just Google it. And then what do we have at the end? What do we have? Computer and myself, that's it? That's all about our faith, eternal life, and God? I want you to think about and meditate your own, your own questions, hopes, doubts, frustrations, or struggles with God and the Bible. Don't be bothered what other people say, what the computer says. Your own questions. We need to experience who God is and who we are in the written letters and the stories of the Bible, but we need to experience them. And then we share them in a group, like a Bible study group, or in a community, small community. That way, that way we may know and understand God. In the way, what way? In the way God prepared for us through the Holy Spirit. God didn't prepare computer programs and apps for us. In the way God prepared for us through the Holy Spirit. Music is so good here in our worship. Music shakes our hearts. Why? Music communicates through the Spirit. That's why music resonates in our hearts. Paul says, humans do not know what God, what God has prepared for those who love God. It is clear to Paul that even though we say we love God and we talk about God, we still don't know God and God's mind. Only in the power of the Holy Spirit, we know God. God's mind and the depth of God. Not through the human intelligence, wisdom, logic, convictions. No matter how strong convictions you have, that's not the way God prepared for us. Strong beliefs, data, judgment, and assumptions. That's not God's way. At the end of today's reading, Paul says, for who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? Once we know the mind of Christ, we cannot instruct Jesus not to go to the cross and suffer the death on it. We cannot do that. Only through the Spirit of God who resides what dwells in our hearts in our spirit, we may not only know the mind of Jesus, but also we have, we have the mind of Jesus. When I prepared this sermon, I kept asking myself, if I knew the mind of my loved ones, rather than just assume I love them, do I really know their minds? As your pastor, do I know do I know the mind of you? Sometimes I do, especially when I listen to your stories of pain, grief, and struggles, because we communicate through the Spirit. I dare to say I know your mind. But many times I don't try hard enough to know your mind. I keep my mind and I just... Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I don't try hard to know your mind. But I still dare to say, I love you all. I love you, I love you all. I can do that, I do that. And even I say, I truly and absolutely love you, each one of you, I can do that. But I cannot say, I know your minds, let alone, I have your minds. I love my child, but it is terrifying to imagine that 
I have my son's mind, who is a 17-year-old boy. It's terrifying. Just imagine that I have his mind. I don't want to have his mind. I want to keep my mind. No, I don't want to have his mind. In the same way, we say we love Jesus, but we may not want to have Jesus' mind because he would shake, disturb, and upside down our lives once we have Jesus' mind. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, the Holy Spirit upside down Mary's life. The Holy Spirit made a virgin pregnant woman, totally upside down her life. And Jesus still said that your will be done. But I cannot do that. I cannot do that. I can say, oh, I love God, I love Jesus. But I don't know. Only the power of the Holy Spirit make it possible. So we want to keep our own mind, and today's gospel reading, Jesus asks us, if salt has lost its saltiness, how can its taste be restored? Saltiness is the core or the depth or the mind of salt. Without saltiness, salt is not salt. In the same way, if we Christians do not have the mind of Jesus, who chose the death on the cross. How can we be called Christians and the followers of Christ? Also, Jesus calls us to be the light of the world. We enjoy to sing that. Jesus calls us to be the light of the world. Only when we abide in Christ, we have the light of Christ as we have the mind of Christ. But consciously and unconsciously, we hide the light. We hide the light. We hide the mind of Christ. And we want to keep our own mind. But Jesus commands us to shine the light before others. So they see Christ in us. They see the good works of Christ. The good works of Christ that he is doing in us and through us. And they, people, give glory to God. The light reveals who God is, where God walks. We cannot be the light of the world by some words we speak. We cannot be the light of the world by just speak some right words, sound good words. Computer apps and computer programs can do it better than us, speaking some sound good words. Not our words, but our righteousness, our righteousness, which is coming from the Spirit, Holy Spirit to our spirit, that we can be the light of the world. So let our light shine before others, and thanks be to God. Amen.
Amen. I invite you to turn to page 12 in your hymnal. And you may have noticed in the bulletin, we will be singing responsively um, after we go through the confession and pardon. Then you will turn to page 17. So you'll be able to follow along with my reading and then you'll sing responsively starting on page 17. Uh, we do have the communion elements when you came into the sanctuary. If you do not have that with you, please um, somebody assist others if you're still looking for communion elements. This Lord's table in our Unambethist tradition is open to all people, regardless of your background, your tradition. It's between you and the grace of God. If you are open to receiving the grace of God, you are welcome to this table and to partake in the elements of the body and blood of Christ. Amen? Let us go to page 12. <clears throat> Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so hear the good news that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners that proves God's love toward us in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God and amen. And to page 17. The Lord be with you. Yes. With you. We lift them up to the Lord. I'm sorry, are we supposed to go to page 17? <laughs> are we supposed to be singing this part? No. Sorry, I'm on page 13 still. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Thank you for lifting your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, and he gave thanks to you. And he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. 
And so pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, the church, and on these gifts of bread and wine, and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer, saying, your communion elements and we'll take off the top part. The body of Christ broken for you. Let's eat the body. And let's reveal the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Oh, thank you. Out of practice. Yes, let us pray. Thank you. Dear God, we thank you that you have shared yourself with us, that you came to be in our midst that you came to breathe out your Holy Spirit on us. To give us not only your spirit, but your mind. As terrifying as that might be, as we heard this morning preached from your word, we pray that you do give us your spirit and your mind so that our lives can be turned inside out and upside down for your kingdom. Lord, we know we have so much work to do here. And we know that the computers cannot carry out your justice. They cannot preach from your spirit or share the mind of Christ. Only the church that you have created, your body, who we are, each and every one of us, some two plus billion people all over this world, and indeed maybe your entire creation, you are pouring yourself into, and so, Lord, on this Sunday morning, we partake in these elements as we partake in each other, as brothers and sisters in your family, the family that you created, by showing your grace and your love and by ultimately yielding to the insanity of this world that just wants to exercise its own power to tear people down and to even execute people. That you said enough of that. I'll yield even to that and yet overcome it to live out a resurrection life. Lord, that is what you call us to. So, dear Lord, let us just take a few moments in silence to pray for all of those people that are in our hearts and minds that may be suffering with illness, whether dealing with the large issues of life, whether it's divorce, 
or rearing children or losing a job. Lord, please be with these people that we name now before you in silence. Dear Lord, be with these people and be with us as we help those people. See that they are not alone, that they can find solace in the church, that we can help them, that we can pray for them, that there is hope and there is a future for them. Lord, we pray all of this in your most holy name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Until the moon comes up. <laughs> sing, sing, and dance, and sing. <laughs> Wonderful. I have some announcements I want to share with you. Today, there is, today afternoon, there is Gummy, our youth fellowship. And Tuesday evening, there is book club. And then Wednesday, lectionary study group. And Thursday, uh, grief support group. If you want to participate in those, small group going on, please let me know. And then our new bishop will be here, will visit our church to meet the people of whole this Lake North district people. But he comes here to meet other people. And if we don't show up and all other church people show up, it's kind of not right. <laughs> The all information is here, bishops, visit, all other uh, announcements. Please read them carefully. And Thursday e-news, please read that too. And the monthly visitor newsletter, all these announcements, we share our life together and read them. And uh, offering baskets in the back of the sanctuary and then online worshipers. Please go to church website and contact, call church office. Then there are many, many different ways we give and support our church, all ministries. And there is this cute one. You can use this QR code also. Jesus said that you are the light of the world. You don't say that. Jesus said that. 
You are the light of the world. Have the mind of Christ and go out to the world and shine your light. The mind of Christ. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.